Midjourney doesn't seem to believe in limits anymore, especially when it comes to adding new features. And that's great news, because with the addition of loop and start end frame tools, users now have completely new ways to shape their videos and make the output far more dynamic, expressive and visually surprising. Just as reliably as Midjourney keeps releasing new features, it also keeps changing the interface. What works today might be gone tomorrow. And that's probably how it'll stay. If the team sees room for improvement, they'll make changes. No doubt about that. So here's what we'll focus on today. First, some real world examples. Good ones and not so good ones. Then how video creation works right now in mid-journey. After that, how to animate using start and end frames, a feature only available in manual mode. And finally, how to create looped animations, available in both auto and manual. Let's start with a few examples. Some turned out great, some didn't. And honestly, that's mostly on me. I probably expected too much. If you use start end frames or the loop feature, you need to keep the limits in mind. Otherwise, you'll end up with jumpy transitions and chaotic morphing. Let's begin with looping, easily one of the highlights among AI platforms. Loop works best when the motion feels naturally repetitive. Cars driving in circles, objects rotating in a showcase, setups being built and taken down, changing daylight or weather, formations and so on. The first loop example shows an origami rhino made of newspaper. Top left is the image, top right the video. The prompt was an origami rhino with its skin composed of folded and crumpled newspaper textured paper, stands on a grey background. It feels a bit like stop motion, but the look fits. That one's a clear plus. In the second loop, we head back nearly a century. Imperial Japan. Troops march through the capital in an endless column. The loop feature really shines here. The faces do morph a bit, probably due to the data set, but overall, nicely done another plus. If you have straight movement though, like a motorbike driving at a frame, loop doesn't help. Five seconds just isn't enough to show a full, believable action arc. The scene feels cut off before it even starts, so this one didn't work. That's a minus. And finally the fourth example. A fight between two very different fighters. On the right, a massive orc. On the left, a small but tough human. The orc clearly didn't expect this, he keeps stepping back while the others just stand there watching, stunned. It's simple, fun animation. And it works. Another plus. Now let's take a look at four examples using start and end frames. Just like with the loops, we'll begin with the rhino. Bottom left, the starting frame. Top left, the ending frame. Top right, the final video. The origami rhino activates its armour, shifting from photorealism to stylized paper. Visually, it's a strong transformation and earns a clear plus. The next example drops us into a post-apocalyptic world. Only a few cities remain, most buried in eternal ice. The animation shows a camera pan between two views of a frozen building. Technically, the pan looks great, but Midjourney had to rebuild the structure mid-animation and that breaks the illusion. This one's a minus. Next up, a supermarket standoff. The SWAT team was called to handle a bear, and now they're just letting him wander the aisles. It's all done in a perfect CCTV style. The lighting, the composition, the timing, it's surprisingly polished. Who knows, maybe they've switched to bears instead of dogs. Either way, well done, and a clear plus. And finally, the year is 2937. The day everything changed. The UNN Anakaima patrols Earth's orbit. Alien scouts have been spotted. Mid-journey turns up the drama. Two ships drift calmly above the planet until a wave of fire erupts. If you use start and end frames with care, you can create scenes like this. Visually stunning and absolutely a plus. Quick recap. There are four ways to create videos in mid-journey right now. Option one, the simplest. Go to the create section hover over an image and click Animate. Option two, also easy. Right click any image, then select Animate and choose between Auto or Manual. Option three, click on an image and in the bottom right panel, 
you'll see Animate Image. From here, you can pick Auto, Low or High Motion, Loop, also Low or High, or Manual. All Auto and Loop options run on Midjourney's own logic, no prompt input possible. But if you choose Manual, your image becomes the starting frame, and the original prompt is reused. Option 4. Just drag any image directly into the starting frame field at the top. That's it for the basics. More details coming up next. Let's take a closer look at how to use start and end frames. They only work in manual mode. First, I upload an external image. You'll see it appear in the starting frame field at the top. To the right, there's a second field labelled ending frame, plus an optional checkbox for loop. If you tick that, the ending frame disappears again. There are two ways to approach this. Version 1 is the simpler one. You create two images, either from scratch or based on the same character, and drag them into the starting and ending frame slots. If they don't differ too much, the transition usually works, but not always. Version 2 takes more effort, but it gives you far more control. Here's how I do it. First, I create an image in Midjourney. As always, you get four options. I pick one and animate it using either auto or manual. Once the animation is finished, I download the video and extract the very last frame, for example in Photoshop. That final frame becomes the visual baseline I want to improve. Now I upload this extracted frame into Midjourney's external image editor and tweak what I don't like. In this case, I gave the rider a helmet by modifying the upper body. Once that's done, I return to Midjourney's animation panel drag in the original image as the starting frame and the modified version as the ending frame. Then I generate the new video. The result speaks for itself. The rider now looks protected and complete. Same motion, but way more convincing than the unedited version. If you're working in manual mode, you can also edit the prompt above the video panel. But be careful what you write. If your starting frame shows a horse and your prompt says a plane is landing, the result won't make much sense. Also important, the animation always covers just five seconds. That's your entire window. So trying to tell a full story, like a world tour, usually backfires. Better to keep things simple and build your video step by step. That way the pacing stays natural and the AI has room to breathe. Here's a quick example. The starting frame shows a horse in the step. The ending frame shows a rodeo tournament. The prompt was, horse runs into town and wins a rodeo tournament. Honestly, I'm surprised how well this worked. The second example was trickier. The prompt said, a horse dives into the crystal clear ocean, water splashing around its body. A diver with goggles follows close behind. Visually complex and it shows, that one didn't fully land. So in cases like that, just start a new sequence. It's often the better choice. Before generating your video, don't forget to choose between low or high motion on the right hand side. That controls how dynamic the animation will be. But keep in mind, the results can vary a lot depending on the scene. A lot of people have asked if Midjourney can create proper loops. With the latest update, yes, it can. But as always, the results depend on the scene. Take the horse running across the prairie. It sounds like an ideal loop. Just keep it running. But in low motion, something odd happens. The horse jumps forward, hesitates, then slides back to its original position to complete the loop. Visually, it has a strange charm, but it feels like the horse jumped the gun before the race even started. If this were the Olympics of looping, the headline would read, Horse Disqualified. In high motion, the loop looks more convincing. The horse keeps running, and the movement flows better overall but toward the end, there's a slight stutter and some colour flickering that breaks the illusion. As mentioned earlier, in auto mode, loops are easy. Just pick loop, low or high, and let the system decide. In manual mode, it's nearly the same. Drag in a starting frame, check the loop box and hit generate. Midjourney is rolling out some great features right now, and I'm probably not the only one hoping they take the next step. Adding audio and voice to the videos. That would open up a whole new level of storytelling. At the moment, I'm doing a lot of that with Runways Act 2. In fact, I'm working on a new short film built entirely around that feature. 
I'll be sharing it soon. And in another upcoming tutorial, I'll show you how I upscale video outputs to the highest possible resolution. The difference in quality is honestly breathtaking. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for listening. See you soon. Your channel, AI, now you know.